Hello there. Good evening. Good evening, teacher. Good evening, teacher. How are you, Ileana? I'm fine, thank you. And you? I'm fine, happy, excited. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you so much for asking. What about Mrs. Herrera? How are you, Patricia? I'm fine. I feel fine very well. Thank you. Excellent. Very good. I'm happy that you're fine. It's happy to see you, girls. We're going to oh, no, el teléfono habló solito. Uh, okay. Okay, don't worry. Uh, we're going to wait around maybe one or two more minutes and we're going to start with the class, all right? I'm just going to stand up and pick something and I'll be right back. And is it raining where you're living? No. No. Todavía no. <laughs> yeah, because in here, ya ni la mina tengo. It was really strong. It's really, really strong. Yeah. How was your day, Patricia? Was it busy? Not, not much. Uh, mm, I was a uh, day very quiet. Mm, look at that. <laughs> a hospital miracle. <laughs> Those things never happen. <laughs> Lo que veo es, es ginecología y obstetricia, entonces eh, lo que se llena es la gripe, mm -hmm. el gripario y cosas así, cirugía, los accidentes, sobre todo de moto, de vehículo, oh, pero no. obstetricia hoy estuvo solo, no tuve casi nada. Y usted, yes, finally. <risa> Yo estudiando inglés en Duolingo. Ay, <risa> no, no. ¿Y qué <risa> If you don't mm. practice, it gets angry. <laughs> All right, girls, yeah. here with you. How about you, Elena? How was your day? Busy, easy. <laughs> no, no, yet. It is stopped. Don't hear. Mi ya está bien. El micrófono no quería. Ahí está. Sí, a veces pasa. Pasa seguido. Sí. All right. So, how was your day, Eliana? Uh, quiet. Quiet. Relax. Um, more or less. Mm -hmm. But I am happy. Okay. Very good. Yeah, remember that it's Monday. And usually, even if your job is uh, easy and you're relaxed or some things like that then there's traffic yes. <laughs> and if you're stuck in traffic you're not up <laughs> all right everyone so welcome to today's class today we have monday september 20th 2021 and today we're going to see the final exam and also we're going to review content learned right reviewing content now, we're going to wait maybe one more minute because I don't see that anyone else is getting into the class, so I'm going to text them. We have a la tarde a todo el mundo. Ni Jansi está todavía. Usually in the last class, um, nobody connected. Really? In the... Last course that I had. This is my fourth. This is my fourth course and is equal. Oh, girl. <laughs> no. Deberían de hacer eso. Se agarran la copia del examen. <laughs> I just kidding. 
como ya está el diploma, no hay problema. Sí, cabal, se les olvida la práctica. <risa> We need to practice. Depende, depende el objetivo por el que esté estudiando uno. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Tiene sentido. You're right. Sí. Exacto. Sí, es, es lo que yo les comentaba, ¿no? Eh, al llenar la plataforma, aprendemos grammar. Fully grammar. And also, we re-enhance our listening, right? But what about speaking? If you don't speak in front of other person, you don't know if you're practicing for real. Yo comencé este curso porque tuve una experiencia de una videoconferencia solo en inglés. Y, y me entendía, pero me costaba entablar ahí conversación. Ajá, uh -huh. that's, that's what I'm telling you. Uno puede entenderlo, puede escribirlo, pero what about expressing yourself? Ahí estaba mi debilidad. Uh -huh, exactly. Now we are seeing that the more you practice your speaking, the better you become. Because look at you. Most of the, in this course, most of the people in this course, they are learning quickly the speaking skill. Yes. Let me check just this. A mí me pasa lo mismo. De hecho, muchas cosas que habla maestra no le entiendo. Pero en el contexto, quizás ahí vamos agarrando. Exactly. Yeah, it's true that. Uh -huh. Good evening. Hello there. Good evening. Good evening, Laura. Good evening. Sorry, yeah. miss. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I was just about to say that, y eso que llegó tarde. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, I was just kidding. Oh, Welcome yeah. back. Just let me send this message to the group, everyone, because I need everyone to be connected. No, lo que yo les quería comentar es que en el último grupo que estuve, los mismos que comenzaron la clase, los mismos llegaron hasta el final. Y era también pre-intermediate. Intermediate. So it was pretty amazing. Ah, qué bueno. Mm, it was pretty amazing because all of them were like, we need to practice, we need to practice. So that's why. All right, everyone, let me go. Let me move forward. Mm, yes. All right, so we have this information just to recognize between two important tenses that we saw during this course. As you may have noticed, basically we developed the course in these two foundations of tenses, right? We have the present, a simple present, and also the present chorus. Now, I'm pretty sure that you already handled quite well this topic, but still, there's always a way to reinforce what we have learned, okay? So let me see, Laura, can you please read the paragraph in blue chart, in the blue chart? Okay. <clears throat> to identify simple present or the use of present progressive, we can use some specific words. Thank you. Now, Actually, in other words, or specifically, we know these words as time expressions, some of them, right? We know them as a time expression because they specify the time in which an activity has been developed. Now, let's see simple present regular activities, Patricia. Simple present regular activities, always, usually, normally, Every day. Excellent. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. What about uh, those are words that are going to help us to to identify between both tenses. What about present progressive, Ileana? Present progressive. Now, right now, now, at the moment, today. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, actually, oh. <laughs> you know oh. why it happened that? <laughs> I was listening to uh, an audio and I heard that the woman said uh, the momento, 
<laughs> so that's why I wrote it down. <laughs> it happens. It happens. I'm telling you. <laughs> you can learn from my mistakes. Usted aprende de mis errores. <laughs> All right. Excellent, everyone. Thank you. Now, this is important. Why, Miss? If we already handle the present progressive and a simple present like this, right? Uh, we're always going to have some issues, right? When learning those topics or how to differentiate them. So keep in mind that if you see this type of words, it will be easier for you to learn which is what, right? Which is regular activities and which are, uh, which are regular activities and which are activities that you're doing right now, okay? That's why you have those words. Now, I'm going to have Jocelyn. Can you please read number one? Okay. I always wear sneakers. Excellent. I'm not sure, but I think I'm missing a C in here. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Jocelyn. Veronica, number two. You usually get grabbed at uh, seven o'clock. Excellent, thank you. What about a uh, number three? Mary. Normally, what? Exactly, thank you. And the last one, Patricia, number four. Do they work in an office every day? In an office every day? Exactly. Sorry for the perro. Ah, oh, don't worry. <laughs> don't worry. A mí a veces me pasa, se escuchan ruidos de exteriores. So don't worry. <laughs> All right. So there you have it. Let's see. Laura, uh, is this, is there any of those sentences that are, that are being in progressive? Or that there is being in progressive? No. No. Exactly. No. How do you identify that? Because uh, the verb doesn't have ing. Mm. Indeed. Exactly. And also, my, what, is my way. <laughs> and uh, for the another words, always, usually, normally. Excellent, there you have it. So we have two ways to figure it out. The first one is the easier actually, right? Like, I don't have ING, that's not progressive, my friends. <laughs> but there you have the other way. Ah, but also check this out. It has always, usually, things that I use in simple present. Now, let's practice a little bit. Today is going to be about reviewing content, and I'm also gonna help you with your midterm exam or with your final exam, right? For some of you, if you haven't finished. But I also have this uh, type of practice for you, right? Do, does, don't, doesn't. Let's work on it, please. You know that this is simple present. Is what is junk food? What's the meaning of junk food? The food that is not healthy at all. It's like fast food, like potato chips, um, hamburgers, 
Fried chicken. Tatarpa. Ah, there you have it. That's a straight to the point. Okay, <laughs> thank you. There you have it, thank you. Let me know when you're finished. Greetings. All right. All right, everyone. So Greetings. let's check those sentences. What do you have for number one, Ileana? I don't like eating junk food, but she does. Excellent, very good, thank you. Let's go with number two. Uh, let me see. I'm going to have Diane. You don't see butterflies, but I do. Excellent, very good, thank you. Let's go with number three, Laura. Sandra and Ali don't That's good. Se le cortó el audio. Can you repeat that again, please? Está lloviendo horrible en Santa Ana ahorita. Yeah, in Europe. <laughs> okay. Sandra and Ali don't enjoy reading, but everyone else in our class do. Excellent. Really good. That's correct. Take into account. Thank you, Laura. It is correct. We are using do. Uh, no, let me see. Sandra and Ali don't enjoy reading, but everyone else in the in our class does. Mm, no, they were talking about that. Yeah, that's correct. Do. About that, yeah. mm -hmm, exactly. That's correct. That's what I wanted to point out in here. If you have Sandra and Ali, you are not able to use does, right? Because we're not talking about a third person. We're just talking in plural, but not about the third person. So there you have it, that's correct. 
Number four, Adriana. Good evening, Miss. Good evening. Mm, Paul doesn't want to get married, but his girlfriend does. Excellent. There you have it. Very good. That's correct. Because we are talking about her, right? And she's not first person, at least not for us. <laughs> so let's move on with number five. And let me see. Patricia, what do you have for number five? I don't know. I don't know much about England, but they do. Exactly. That, there you have it. Thank you so much. All right, everyone, this was a short, quick practice, right? Let's move down to the final exam. Now, after the final exam, we do have uh, another practice, but let's see, how can we roll this, right? Now, we have last class, we saw a, the listening presentation, right? So today we're going to see the part B, complete conversations. Now, the instruction says complete the sentences with do, does, or will. Let's see. What do you think or what do you have for number one? Let me see. Um, Jocelyn, what do you think is the answer for number one? Uh, do? Do you like to see a movie? Tonight. All right, thank you. Don't forget that do. Uh, most of the time it's taken as an imperative, right? So if I want to ask her nicely and polite, what can I use? I have three options. I have do, does, or would. Let's see. Mary, what do you have for number one? Let's see, Veronica, what do you have for number one? Would you like to see a movie tonight? Exactly, thank you. Sure, what time does it start, right? Thank you. Would, why? Remember that when you are requesting something in, in, a, in a polite way, you gotta use wolf, right? Because we're not being uh, like pushed, like mandatory. That's why we're not able to use do or does, right? We have to use wolf. And let's go with number two. What do you think? <coughs> I'm sorry. What do you think it might be the answer for number two, Ileana? Do you like horror movies? Exactly. And the answer? No, not really. Excellent, there you have it, thank you. Do you like horror movies? You're asking to a first person, right? Now, in this case, you're not being mandatory, but also you need to use that as it. So that is correct. Uh, you need to use that imperative, basically. So it is correct. Let's move on to the next one. Ah, for the ones that maybe for some reason you haven't completed the final exam yet, you can take these notes, right? We have number three, Adriana. What do you think it could be number three's um, answer? What kind of music? Does your friend Ricardo like? Exactly, very good. I love it that you didn't get confused with that possessive adjective, right? Your. <laughs> Porque fácilmente podríamos confundirnos por el your y decir, ah, first person. Si no nos acordamos que es el possessive adjective, podríamos tomar ese as a subject. That's correct. We need does. Because we're talking about a third person, not in first place, third person. All right, so let's move on. Part two, I hope you can see this better. <laughs> this is part two. Um, 
Let me check. Laura, can you please read the instructions? Instructions. Complete the following conversation. Use the present continuous of the verbs. Okay, thank you. Now, let's check. What do you have for number one? Uh, remember, it says use present continuous of the verbs. So this is pretty simple, right? You just need to think about the structure. What do you have for number one, Nestor? Um, how will you sister study this there? Uh -huh. But if I want to ask Nestor a yes, no question, how can I start a yes, no question? I'm sorry, no. What's the verb? I have to start my yes, no question with a verb to be. What's the verb to be that I can use in oh, that case? Um, she is studying. A student is my verb in progressive, but what's my verb to be? No, she, she. She. Okay. She is studying the dearest day. Is she a verb, Nestor? Or a sujeto? Sujeto. It's a subject, exactly. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, let's check this up. Is she a studying? Lo que usted dijo, si está correcto, studying in the NG. That's correct. Pero nunca nos olvidemos que para hacerlo progresivo, we need the verb to be also. Uh, we have plenty of grammatical rules in this case, right? You were noticing that if you have these types of, uh, of words, you're able to recognize present progressive. Now, by in this case, you're able also to recognize or to add present progressive by adding the verb to be. You cannot have present progressive with the verb to be. Let's go with number two, Patricia. What do you think is the answer for number two? <clears throat> number two, no, she isn't. Uh, she's working as a cashier at a grocery store. Excellent, there you have it, bravo. We're not missing anything from the structure. Number, uh, I told you number two, and actually that was B. <laughs> but thank you, Patricia. What about number two, Diane? Is that David over there? Who is he waiting for? Exactly, very good. Now in here, we're not using double, we're not using just no questions, right? We are using double H questions. So it is correct. As we have a double H word, we are able to put the verb to be after the double H word. Now for letter B, what's your answer for letter B, uh, Jocelyn? Uh, his true friend, her, her friend, me, Maggie. She's coming. In on the bus. Excellent, thank you. She is coming. So there you have it. As he asked something with double H, I'm able to give or to provide more information about that, right? Let's move on. And let me see. We have multiple choice. Just give me one second. And the instructions says, choose the correct word. Now in here, it's a little bit easier maybe, or it's tricky. Let's see. What do you have for number one, Laura? No, Jay does yoga every more than before breakfast. Breakfast. Exactly. That's correct. Very good. 
does jog every morning before breakfast. We're not able to say does football because we know that we use another verb in that, in that case, all right? Thank you very much. What about number two? Let's see, Ileana, number two. Um, how often do you go swimming in the summer? Okay, let's see, let's check. What about you, Ileana? What do you think is the answer for number two? How often do you go swimming in the summer? Exactly. Remember that even in Spanish, we don't say hacer uh, natación, um, right? We don't say it like that, it's straight. We say, we use another type of verbs in the same way we in here. We are using go swimming in the summer. Thank you very much, both of you. What about the last one, number three? Might need... Patricia, what do you have for number three? I sometimes I sometimes play baseball with my friends. Exactly, indeed, that's correct. I cannot say play in line skating because that actually is for another verb, right? I say I practice in line skating or I go in line <clears throat> skating. I do aerobics, but I'm not able to say I play aerobics, right? Aerobics. So that's mm -hmm. why the correct answer, it must be baseball. Thank you. Now let's move on to this part. Audrey, how's her last name? Audrey Tatuk. Maybe, I don't know, she's French. So her last name is difficult. Let me see, I'm going to get Diane. Can you please read uh, the first two lines? Audrey Tatu is a young French actress. She has fans around the world. Here are some interesting things about Audrey's life and career. Excellent, thank you. Let's get 1978. Uh, Mary, Audrey, Audrey is born in the Belmont, Belmont, France. Right, thank you, Belmont. Um, continue, Laura, please. 1980s and 1990s. 1980s and 1990s, Audrey acts in plays, especially comedies, in high school. After that, she goes to acting school. She wins the, the prize, she wins the prize Best Newcomer for her acting or French TV 1999. Exactly, thank you. Can you please read the same paragraph, Veronica, please? Veronica, are you there? If not, let me have Jocelyn, please. The same paragraph. Audrey acts. Uh, Audrey acts in plays, especially comedies, in high school. After that, she goes to a thick school. She wins the prize best newcomers for her acting on French TV. 1999. Come on. 1999. 1999. Excellent, thank you. Country, continue, uh, Ileana, please. 2000 to 2002. 2000, 2002, Audrey acts in many movies, including Boyos, Boyer. Yeah, it's in French. <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> then she plays a young woman called Amelie in a movie on the same name. Amelie 2001 is in French, but the film is a big international hit. Audrey becomes popular in many countries, including the United States. Audrey also acts in a film called God is Great and Not 2002. All right, excellent. Thank you. Very good. Yeah. Let me check. Um, Adriana, please read the same pattern. I will try. Yeah. Audrey acts in many movies, including Boyos Boyel, 2000. Then she plays a young woman called Amelie in a movie of the same name, Amelie, 2001, is in French, but the film is a big international hit. Audrey becomes popular in many countries, including the United States. Audrey also acts in a film called God is Great, I'm Not, 2002. Exactly, very good. That was great, Adriana. Thank Excellent. You. Now let's go with the last paragraph. Patricia, please. Audrey, uh, well, 20, uh, 2003. Uh -huh, 2003. Audrey has a big year. She acts in the Spanish ap apartment and he loves me. He loves me not. She also acts in dirty Dirty Pretty Things. This is the first time she speaks English in a movie. Excellent, thank you very much. Now, the last person that I'm going to have in this practice of reading is Nestor. The last paragraph, Nestor, 2023. 2023? Oh, I'm sorry, no, it's 23, it's 2003. <laughs> Yeah, well, in the 2023. Audrey has big year. Uh, she acts in the Spanish apartment uh, and he loves uh, me. He loves me not. She also acts in these pretty things. This is the first time she speaks English in the movie. Excellent. Thank you very much. Now, everyone, a uh, quick update in here. Remember, thank you, Nestor. That was great. Uh, remember that when you're reading, I know that you are tired from uh, traffic, from your job and all those things. But remember that when you're reading, especially in a second language, you need to give it all, <laughs> right? You shouldn't accept anything. You, know, you should try to, best, to, to make your best effort as much as you can. Even if you believe, no, I can't speak very well, at least try to go higher with the boys, go down with the boys, like if you were happy of being ready, right? Let's try to do that. Believe me, reading is not only good for your knowledge, but also for every skill, every any other skill that you have, reading is great for it. Now let's move on. We have number one, in high school, Audrey tattoo <laughs> acts. Let's see. Who has the answer for that? In place. All right. Are you sure? Somebody else? No one. Ya hicieron el examen. <laughs> no me mientan. <laughs> I know you do have the answers. Exactly. Very good, Patricia. Very good. In place. Simple as that. You just need to read the information and extract the information. Number two, many Americans like the movie. Which movie, Adriana? Amelie. Let's see. 
Amelie, exactly. Very good. Thank you. Number three. Audrey acts in three movies. In? Let's see, Diane. I don't remember. You don't I, remember. Think, uh, I think it was in 2003. All right, let's check. Very oh. good. <laughs> Very good memory, my friend. Excellent. And the last one, number four. In her movies, Audrey usually speaks. This is a piece of cake, right? <laughs> Let's see, Mary. Okay, okay. Um, it's French. Let's see. Exactly. Very good, everyone. Excellent. I'm proud of you because you are reading, but also at the same time trying to remember facts from the readings, right? That's pretty good. You're being beyond. <laughs> Excellent. All right, everyone, now listen, this is a special request from Mrs. Mata, right? <laughs> no creo que me había olvidado, Diane, que usted me pidió que viéramos esto, right? As a review. Lo único que tenía que dejarlo ya está como un review. Now listen, I don't know, maybe some of you uh, is going to recognize, are going to recognize this picture. Some others, maybe not. Let's hope not. <laughs> All right, now let's just check this thing out. When we're talking about timing, we don't have like one specific way to express it, you know? Somebody might say it's nine, it's nine past 15, uh, or it's nine 15, or it's nine, and I don't know anything else, right? You have more than one option to express the time, all right? In this case, it's not something like, it's good to run, how do you express it, right? You just need to keep in mind some uh, time expressions basically in here, all right? So we have the first one. Patricia, can you please read this one, the first one? Um, it's one o'clock. Exactly, thank you. So I also am able to say it's 1 p.m., it's 1 a.m., all right? It's not exactly mandatory for you to say it's 1 o'clock. You do have the option and you're able to do it and you're welcome to do it, but it's not mandatory. Let's go with the second clock, Laura. It's 1.05 or it's 5 after 1. Exactly, very good. So I can say it's 1.05 or it's uh, five minutes after one or it's five after one. Or I'm also able to say it's one with five minutes, right? That's what I'm telling you. You have more than one way to express time. You just need to be, um, you just need to learn some time expressions and also try to be confident, right? Do not feel that you're making a mistake when you're providing your time. Just try to give something. Let's go with the third clock. Ileana, please. It's 1.15, it's a quarter after one. Exactly, thank you. So as I was telling you before, I'm able to say any of those two options, but I'm also able to say, hey, it's one after 15, right? I'm able to say it. It's not like you're not. To. Let's go on with the fourth clock. Mm, Veronica? It's one. Exactly. Exactly. It's one third. Excellent. Thank you. Same thing. Same rule applies, right? Let's go with the uh, fifth clock. I'm going to have Adriana, please. 
It's one forty. It's twenty two two. Exactly. Actually, if you listen to it, thank you, Adriana. If you listen to it, it's, it's weird, right? Like it's twenty to two. But it's also a way to express the time. That's once again what I'm telling you. Do not feel obeyed. Uh, no, do not feel pushed yourself to say it in a certain way. With the pass of the years, you will learn that there is more than one way to express something. And the last one, Diane, can you please do me the favors? It's 1.45, it's a quarter to two. Exactly, thank you. So I have those two options, or I'm also able to say, we are missing a 15 minutes to two, all right? Like in Spanish, faltan 20 las dos, right? Faltan 20 para las dos, right? Uh, we're missing 20 minutes to, uh, 15 minutes, no, 45 minutes to two. So you have it. It's another option for you to get. Now we have these expressions, which certainly can be useful. I'm going to have Nestor, can you please help me with these uh, words, with these structures? In the morning, I am. Noon, PM. Mm -hmm. In the afternoon, PM. In the evening, PM. At night, PM. In midnight, I am. Excellent, thank you very much. All right, my dear students. Now, keep into consideration that the more you use this type of topics, the better you'll become, right? For example, in the morning, you're able, instead of saying, ah, it's one and it's 10 in the morning, you can say it's 10 a.m., right? A.m. as the alphabetic letters. Now, so far, are we good or we have any questions about this? Questions, questions? No, 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 everything is clear? All right, are you sure? Diane, you don't have any questions? No, everything is clear, thank Excellent. you. Excellent, very good. All right, I'm happy, everyone. Now, let's move to another practice. Do you remember this uh, question words? Who? What, when, where, why, and how. We also know these words as double H words, right? Now you have this practice. Let's work on it, please. It says complete the sentences. Uh, well, actually these are not sentences, these are questions, right? But you must complete them. You can use the one that you believe is the correct one.
finish. Excellent. Excellent, very good. Finish. Excellent. Very good. We may start as well. What do you have for number one, Veronica? What is your name? Exactly. What's your name or what is your name? Now, by any chances, you know that in that first question, you do are able to make a contraction, which in any case, it sounds so much better, right? What's your name? Instead of saying, what is your name? But you can have both. Uh, let's see. Mary, what do you have for number two? Where do you live? I live in Ilo Vasco. <laughs> Excellent, very good. That's so great. <laughs> let's check number three. Patricia, what do you got for number three? Mm. Where is the rover? Mm -hmm. In the pencil case. Excellent, thank you. What about number four? Um, let me see. Jocelyn? Mm. <laughs> Is the who is he? Mm -hmm. Indeed. He, he is my teacher. Excellent. Very good. Adriana, number five. When is your birthday? The 3rd of February. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, let's go with Eliana, number six. What is your favorite food? My favorite food is cheese. Excellent. That's weird. <laughs> All right. Like if we were a mice or a mouse or something else. <laughs> let's see. Laura, number seven. Who is your friend? Ivan is my friend. Exactly, very good, thank you. And the last one, Diane, please, number eight. When are you going to the beach? In upper. Excellent, now with this, we have seen the practice. I have no doubt at all that you know how to handle this, and I'm proud of it. After a lot of practice, after a lot of exercises in the platform, and then here you are, I, I believe that maybe, before you already know how to handle this topic, but it's pretty good that you're practicing so that you're never forgetting. Because believe me, if you don't practice, you will forget it. <laughs> and it sounds sadly, but it is what it is. Now, let's work on this one, please. We have the demonstratives. If you check the signs, these are going to help you to recognize if it is far or near, right? If it is far or close. So let's work on it, please. Actually, in this exercise, it's pretty simple because it says, choose the correct option, this or those.
Okay, we may start as well. What do you have for number one, Adriana? Um, these, these are watches. <laughs> are you sure? If, if you have two, one and one hand. Yeah, but remember, look at the sign. Mira la flecha, look at the sign. Is ah, it okay. small or long? Uh, long. Uh, so sería, those are watches. Exactly. Those Exactly, very good. Let's go with number two, Diane. These are books. Exactly, indeed. I have the short sign. Number three, Patricia. Your mic. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> These are my chairs. Exactly. Very good, because I have them near. Number four, Veronica. Those are bananas. Exactly. And number five, Nestor, what do you have for number five? Eh, sería eh, dos are apple. Uh -huh. Exactly. Excellent. Thank you. Now, everyone, we're going to finish thing here, but I have a question for you. Is all are all the topics are all the topics clear for you? You don't have any doubt about the demonstrative, simple present, present progressive. Do you? Miss, uh -huh. I I I have um, I feel uh, confused between present continuous and per, um, simple present. Uh -huh. Why? Uh, I don't know when I need use one or another. Okay, let's see, Adriana. We used simple present when we are talking about daily activities. For example, I wake up every day. That's a fact, right? So I wake up at 7 a.m. That's simple present. Simple present is used for usual activities, everyday activities, or uh, facts, things that you know that are true for sure. By the, on the other hand, we have a present progressive, which it's about activities that you are doing right now. For example, you are watching the computer. You are sitting in a chair, right? You are uh, talking to your teacher. Those are activities that you're doing right now. That's why, or therefore it should be progressive. And notice also this, please, eh, Adriana. Le estaba comentando, I was telling you at the beginning of the class, that we have these words for you to take them into account to differentiate them, okay? This is useful for you to realize when it's been used simple present and when it's been used present progressive. Okay? Mm -hmm. yeah. Is it a little bit clearer now? Yes, I am. Um, sometimes I don't know when when I need change the verb. Um, mm. In simple present, you need uh, add ing. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. Uh, in the in the in the quiz, in this part, uh, I can do it. Mm -hmm. Lo que sucede, Adriana, es que también tiene que reconocer que para el present progressive Siempre va a ser mandatory el verb to be. Sin el verb to be no va a tener progressive. Mientras que para el simple present, usted no tiene verb to be. It's true. 
Mm -hmm. Sí, that's another tip. Hay muchas maneras de reconocer las diferencias y estas palabras son una de ellas. Lo otro es lo que también comentábamos, el verb to be. Y también algo que les va a ayudar es desarrollar su listen. Eso también. Porque cuando ustedes se escuchan, si a ustedes les parece, les suena bien, la mayoría de veces es porque de esa manera. Ok. Thank you, Miss. Very good. All right, everyone. As I told you before, it was a pleasure to be with you. Today is our last class. Congratulations, <laughs> because you finished your whole course. And I have no doubt that you have progressed a lot. All right. So it was a pleasure to see you today. Have a great night. See you in another course, maybe. <laughs> Bye. Thank you for all, teacher. Thank you. Bye. Good night. Bye. Thank you so much. Welcome. Nice to meet you. Thank you. The same Thank thing. you, Miss. Bye. Bye. Nice Bye, everybody. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. 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 Goodbye.